somehow, Lord, to, with the fruit of our lips today, God, to, with the clapping of our hands today, God, to, we offer up a sacrifice unto you now, Lord, to, for the sacrifice that you made for us, Lord, to, way back on Calvary, oh God, to, we thank you for it on today, my God, to, and not just today, Lord, to, but every day of our lives, Lord, to, help us to acknowledge you, oh God, to, help us to seek you, my God, to, while you might be found, Lord, to, help us to seek you, oh God, to, help us to study your word, Lord, to, help us to look on our, off your face, oh God, to, and not your hand today, oh God, to, not just for what you can do for us, God, to, but for just for being who you are, God, to, we thank you for it even now, my God, to, we lift your name up for it even now, oh God. We give your name praise for it on today, Lord. And I give you praise now, God, for what you're doing in the midst of us, Lord. For everybody you're going to touch today, Lord. For everybody you're going to save today, God. For everybody you're going to heal today, my God. I thank you in advance for it now, Lord. Even what you've done already, God. We give you praise for it, Lord. As we bring in prayer this week, God. Somebody was seeking you this week, Lord. Somebody was seeking you this week, Lord. Look Looking for another touch from you, God. Looking for another touch from you, God. Look on him today, my God. Hear the cries of your people, Lord. Hear our prayers, oh God. Even our supplication, Lord. That's been made before you, God. Even aforetime, Lord. I know you're answering that prayer, God. And even now, my God, those who are assembling, my God, and looking unto you today, Lord. I know you're going to hear him, my God. I know you're going to hear him, my God. God, like you do so well, Lord. And I thank you even now, Lord, for how you're moving in the midst of us, my God, for your power today, Lord, that's already moving amongst us, God. And even now, Lord, the prayers that are being offered up to you, God, I thank you that you hear them on today, God, and for what you're going to do in our lives, God, for you know the plan, my God, that you have toward us, God. I thank you now, my God, for the thoughts that you think toward us, Lord, our thoughts of peace today, my God, and not of evil, oh Lord. I give you praise for it today, God, for every thought, my God, that proceedeth out of your mind, God. Every thought to make us today, God. Every thought to mold us today, God. As perfect as you can, my God. As perfect as you can, my God. I thank you for it today, Lord. And Satan, the Lord rebuke you now. Satan, the Lord rebuke you today. It will not be another service today. It will not just be another happening today, but this atmosphere on today, Lord, shall be an atmosphere where you can move, God. It shall be an atmosphere of miracles today, my God. It shall be an atmosphere today, my God, with no hindrances today, God. With no hindrances today, God. We thank you now, Lord. We charge the atmosphere today, God. We charge the atmosphere with our voices, God. We charge the atmosphere with the clapping of our hands, my God. We say hallelujah today, Lord, for it is the highest praise that we have, Lord God, and we thank you even now, Lord. You said, my God, that when the praises go up, God, that the blessings come down today, God. I know somebody might be looking, God, for a blessing from you today, Lord. Let them know, my God, that they're in just the right place, my God, at just the right time, my God, for everything, my God, that you've orchestrated for our lives, God is perfect in every way, Lord. Let them know, my God, that right here and now, Lord, that you can bring them out of this situation, God, that you can even heal them from this situation, God, that they don't have to be bound today, my God. Loose every chain today, my God. Loose every chain today, my God. Free somebody today, God. Free them in their minds, my God. From every thought today, my God, if you want to free now, God. Free from anxiety today, God. God, uh, free from depression today, my God. Uh, free from suicide today, my God. Uh, even free now, my God. Uh, free in the heart today, God. Uh, free in the heart today, my God. Uh, from every heartbreak, oh God. Uh, take away the sorrow now, God. Uh, take away the sorrow now, God. Uh, and give them back joy today, oh God. Uh, and give them back love today, oh God. Uh, and give them back peace today, oh God. Uh, have mercy now, Lord. Uh, do it in their souls, God. 
God. Because we need you today, oh God. Our souls need you today, oh God. Our souls need you today, oh God. Come on, somebody. If you know you need God today, you ought to offer up the fruit of your lips today. You ought to offer up the fruit of your lips today to the God of your salvation now. The one who got up for you. The one who got up for you. He didn't stay in the grave, but he got up for you. If you know today that he got up for you. If you know today that he saved your soul. That he made you whole. And even now, my God, that he's coming back again for you. You ought to say yes, somebody. Say yes, somebody. Offer up the fruit of your lips today. Have mercy now, Lord, on your people today, my God. Move all in the place today, Lord. Move all in the place today now. Go up and down the aisles, God. Go up and down the roads, God. And look on them now, my God. Touch them in a mighty way, Lord. All those that gather in your name today, Lord. Touch them in a mighty way, my God. Like only you can today, God. Like only you can today, God. You hear every prayer, my God. You hear every supplication, my God. As our hands are lifted today, God. God, as we're clapping our hands today, God, have mercy on us now, Lord. Have mercy on us now, Lord. Have mercy on us now, Lord. Our soul say yes today, God. Our soul say yes today, God. Say yes, somebody. Say yes, somebody. Somebody say yes. Oh, God. Oh, God. Move now, Lord. Move now. Our Lord, change today, God. Change today, God. Like only you can today, God. Wherever you want to move, Lord God, in every area of our lives, God. If you want to move in our homes, God. If you want to move on our children, God. If you want to move on our finances, God. Make a change today, God. Make it new even now, God. All things new on today, God. We don't want to refurbish, oh God, but give us new today, God. Even they that labor, my God. Don't forget about them today now, Lord. You see every labor, oh God. Every day that they labored, oh God. Don't forget about them today, oh God. And we look into you now, Lord, with the clapping of our hands, God. We thank you today now, Lord, with the fruit of our lips, God. Because we know today, God, that you answer our prayers, oh God. Have mercy now, Lord. That you answer our prayers today, God. Our souls say thank you, Lord. Our souls say thank you, Lord. Our souls say thank you, Lord. Now come down, my God. Let your presence today, Lord. Let it rest in the place, God. Oh, Jesus. Oh, Jesus. Rest now, my God. Even remember today, God. Those that are sick, my God. Those in the hospital, my God. If they couldn't make it in, God. Let your presence today today, Lord. Let it go wherever they are, God. Let it go wherever they are, God. Let it go wherever they are, God. And heal somebody today. Heal somebody today. Heal somebody today. Like only you can today, God. And we thank you for it now, Lord. We claim healing today, God. Healing for your people today, God. Healing for your people today, God. We claim it by faith now, God. Like only you can, Lord. Touch every condition of the blood today. Touch every condition of the heart today. Touch every condition of the mind today. And we receive it now, God. Somebody say yes. Oh, yes, Lord. Oh, yes, Lord. Say yes, somebody. Say yes, somebody. Say yes, somebody. Oh, God. Don't let it be another Resurrection Sunday, God, where a soul is not saved, God, but go get them today, Lord, from wherever they might be, God. Let them know you can save them, my God. Let them know you died for them, my God. Let them know you rose up again for them, God. Raise up today, my God. Raise up today, my God. Raise up your sons today, God. Raise up your daughters today, God. Come on, Jesus. Oh, 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 Jesus. Oh,
Jesus. We call you now, Jesus. That same Jesus today that rose again for you. Somebody call Jesus. He got up. 
could not hold him. My Savior, he got up. He got up. He got up. Death could not hold him. My Savior, he got up. Oh, yes. He got up. He got up. Death could not hold him. My Savior, he got up. Come on. He got He got up. He got up. Death could not hold him. I say he got up. Oh, he got up. He got up. Death could not hold him. I say he got up. Clap those hands. He got up. He got up. Death could not hold him. Yes, he did. He got up. Death could not hold him. I said he got up. What'd he do? He got up. He got up. Death could not hold him. I said he got up. What'd he do, church? He got up. He got up. Death could not hold him. My Savior, he got up. One more. Come on. He, he got up. He got up. Death could not hold him. My Savior, he got up. Come on. Praise him. He got, he got up. He got up. Death could not hold him.
praise him. He rose with all power in his hands. God's not dead. He's yet alive. God's not dead. He's yet alive. God's not dead. He's yet alive. I can feel him in my hand. Feel him in my feet. Feel him all over me. God's not dead. He's yet alive. God's not dead. He's yet alive. God's not dead. He's yet alive. I can feel him in my hand. Feel him in my feet. Feel him all over me. Oh, God's not dead. No, he's yet alive. God's not dead. No, he's yet alive. God's not dead. No, he's yet alive. I can feel him in my hand. Feel him in my feet. Feel him all over me. Oh, God's not dead, church. He's yet alive. God's not dead. He's yet alive. Oh, God's not dead. No, he's yet alive. I can feel him in my hand. Feel him in my feet. Feel him all over me. Oh, God's not dead. He's dead alive. God's not dead. He's dead alive. Oh, God's not dead. No, he's dead alive. I can feel him in my hand. Feel him in my feet. Feel him all over me. I know God's not dead. No, he's dead alive. God's not dead. He's dead alive. Oh, God's not dead. No, he's dead alive. I can feel him now. Come on, give him glory now. Because of him and the sacrifice that was made, we're able to stand here today free 
from the guilt and the bondage of sin. Come on, bruh. Hey, glory to God. Hallelujah. Who can stand against the Lord? No one can. And no one will. Who can stand against the king? No one can. And no one will. Who can stand against the Lord? No one can. And no one will. Who can stand against our King? No one can. And no one will. Come on. Who can stand? Who can stand against the Lord? No one can. And no one will. Who can stand? Who can stand against the King? No one can. And no one Cause victory belongs to Jesus. Victory belongs to Him. 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 Victory. Victory belongs to Jesus. Victory belongs to him. Victory belongs to Jesus. The victory belongs to him. Yes. The victory belongs to Jesus. The victory belongs to him. Victory belongs to Jesus. Victory belongs to Him. Who can stand? Who can stand against the Lord? No one can. No one can. He's got all power. And no one will. Who can stand against our King? Come on, say. Who can? Who can stand against the king? No one can. And no one will. Who can stand? Who can stand against the Lord? Come on, church. No one can. No one. No one. King today, who can stand? Who can stand against the king? No one can, no one will. Why? Because victory belongs to Jesus, victory belongs to him, victory belongs to Jesus. The victory belongs to him. Say it. The victory belongs to Jesus. The victory belongs to him. The victory belongs to Jesus. The victory belongs to him. Yes, Lord, Lord. Hallelujah. You have won the victory. Can we just?
just worship our risen Savior today. Hallelujah. Reigns on high. Reigns on high. Our God is. Re- 
Thank you, Jesus. church you have won the victory hallelujah 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 and who did he win it for you have won it all for me now right here right here right here right here Right here, give him praise. Right here, tell him thank you. Thank you, Lord. Right here, love on him. Thank you, Jesus. Come on, come on, come on. Come on, right here, right there. Thank you, Jesus. Come on, come on. Somebody tell him thank you. Thank you, Jesus. Oh, glory to God. Somebody tell him thank you. Thank you, Jesus. If it had not been for Jesus. Come on, somebody tell him thank you. Thank you, Jesus. Somebody say glory to God. Somebody say hallelujah. Hallelujah. Hey, glory to God. Oh, come on, give him praise. Hallelujah. Let the people of God give him praise. I just need the people of God to give him honor. If you know he's been good, somebody just bless his name. Come on and bless him. That's right. Come on, bless him, bless him. Come on, bless him, bless him. Hey, my soul love you. Oh, come on, love on him. Come on, love on him. Come on, love. Come on, he's the very breath that we breathe. Come on, love on him. Come on, he's the very breath that we breathe. Come on, love on him. Hallelujah. Because of him we live, we move, and we have our being. Hey, come on, come on. Every breath I breathe. Every breath I breathe. Oh, come on, worship it. Come on and praise him. Come on and bless God this morning. Hallelujah. He's worthy of the praise. He's worthy of the glory. Hey, hallelujah. Oh, we honor him this morning. Oh, thank you, Jesus. We give you the glory and the honor. 
We worship you in spirit and in truth. Oh, hallelujah, Jesus. Hallelujah. From the rising of the sun to the going down of the same. Hey, he's worthy of all the praise. He's worthy of all the glory. We honor God this morning. We bless his holy name. Oh, Jesus. Glory be to God. He the Lord of Lords and the King of Kings. We come to praise him this morning. We come to magnify him this morning. We come to give him glory. Oh, we thank you as Resurrection Sunday. Everything that's dead in your life, he's going to raise it up today. Give him praise and give him glory. Oh, come on, come on, people of God. Why don't you stand to your feet and reverence God this morning? If you was in the courthouse, you would have to stand for the judge. But we serve the judge of all judges. We serve the king of all kings. We got a right to stand to our feet and give him praise. Oh, hallelujah, Jesus. We bless God this morning. If it had not been for the Savior today, you'll be in the devil's hell this morning. If it had not been for the Savior today, You'll be laying in the grave this morning. But he put breath in your body this morning. He breathed the breath in your soul this morning. He enabled you to get up this morning so you can come to the house of God, huh? so you can worship God. Huh? Come on and clap your hands up. Huh? Come on and worship your God this morning. He's been good to us. He's yet alive. The God I serve is not dead. Huh? The God I serve is alive, huh? sitting on the right hand of the Father. Huh? Come on and praise him this morning. Come on and open up your mouth and give him glory. Say yes, somebody. Hallelujah, hallelujah. Oh, glory to God, glory to God. We thank God this morning. We thank God for this Resurrection Sunday this morning, where we are a center of hope. For all people, if you're sick, you're in the right place. Hallelujah. Where you're here, where you can get healing from. You can get restoration. You can get deliverance. Right here in the house of God. Come on and clap your hands. We thank God for our very own Bishop Dennis Thompson. Amen. I elect Lady Cheryl Thompson. Hallelujah. We thank God for our elder day for... All our ministers, we thank God for Elder Boleg and Dr. English. Thank God for my sister in the back, Elder Sherry Patterson. My God, good to see you. We bless God this morning. We thank God for our viewing audience today. We thank God for those that came out into the house of God to worship with us today. We thank God for all our visitors. Thank God for Sister Pam being with us today, my God. We give God all the praise and all the glory. I tell you, you have, I hope you have a great expectation. Because he's already here. We give God the praise. We're going to have the announcements at this time. Praise the Lord, everybody. Praise the Lord, everybody. Happy Resurrection Sunday. Happy Resurrection Sunday. Amen. He got up. Amen. Amen. We thank God. He got up for us. Amen. Amen. If you're not happy, I'm happy. Amen. Thank God. Only the Lord knows where I would be if he didn't get up for me. Amen. Amen. So today is our Resurrection Sunday. There will be an Easter egg hunt directly after service today. Please see Sister Nikki Jackson for more information. Amen. Amen. On Sunday, April the 7th. It is our first Sunday pastoral offering, amen. Pastor Parker is not here, but he would like everyone to remember, amen, to give a love gift to our, our bishop and first lady, amen. We have white envelopes um, that are specifically for that, amen. If you don't have one, please ask a usher, amen. And that's for next Sunday. 
Uh, we would also like to say from Pastor Dade and from Pastor Parker is thank you to everyone who is making their monthly payments for Bishop and First Lady's 35th church anniversary. Amen. 35 years. They're deserving of that and more. Amen. Amen. We just want to remind you that when you make your payments, whether it's just the payment plan or you're making a full balance, please let me, Sister Kim, or Pastor Parker know. Amen. So that we can mark it down. Amen. Amen. On Sunday, April the 14th, is our pastoral encouragement service. Amen. Amen. Praise God. We set aside that time, amen, to celebrate with our leaders, with other guest pastors. And this time we have Pastor Saida Carter of Deliverance Worship Center in Deford, New Jersey. She will be here with us at 5, amen. But we are asking IHI members to be here at 4.30, amen, so that we can be ready to receive our guests. Anyone, anyone that is, knows any member of IHI or if you have anyone in your family, friends that is sick or anyone among you, amen, or going through something, amen, we just ask you to let our elder Boleg know up here at the front, amen, so that she can add the name to the prayer room, amen, so that we can bombard heaven, amen for deliverance. Amen. Amen. And also in the way of announcements for last day, Remnant Bible Institute um, classes will resume tomorrow. Amen. Spring break is over. Amen. But it, your classes will resume tomorrow. Amen. And that's a blessing. Amen. If you have a cell phone or if you are um, have any gum, we ask you to please reverence the household of God. Amen. No texting, no talking on your cell phone in the sanctuary. If you have gum or candy, we ask you that you just look around you when you get up. Make sure you're picking up your trash. Amen. We want more. God has declared more for us. Amen. 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 And I'm going to just say we just thank God for everyone that's keeping our our uh, cafeteria, amen, and our dining room clean, amen, prophesying that right now, amen, as we speak, amen, we thank you for just all the beautiful meals that are being cooked in the kitchen, amen, we thank you for, the, for bringing your kids for the daycare, amen, we thank you, we thank you to every van driver for all of our vans, amen, to pick up souls, amen. We thank you. We speak it now. And we believe it. Amen. Amen. And enjoy the rest of your day. God bless. Come on. Praise the Lord, everybody, for those great announcements. I do want to add one more announcement on next Saturday. This is for all the men. This is for all the men. At next Saturday, which will be the 6th at 5 o'clock, meet me here at the church. We're going to have a men's meeting at 5 o'clock. If you're working, bring your work clothes. We got things to do. All right? All right, brethren? That's 5 o'clock. All right? So at this time, we're going to have Sister Kayla come uh, with the babies. Amen. Praise the Lord. Everyone that has an Easter speech, I want you guys to come up here. All the children that have an Easter peak, please bear with them. This is most of them their first time. Some of them are a little nervous, and some of them are excited. <laughs> First, we are going to have Aaliyah. For the Son of Man came to seek and save those who are lost. Luke 19, verse 10. Next, we are going to have Eleanor. <laughs> Why do I have to be second? My verses are 
1 Corinthians 16, 13, be on guard, stand firm in the faith, and be courageous and be strong. 1 Corinthians 16, 13. Good job. Good job. Next, we are going to have Tony. <laughs> Mark 15, 25. It was 9 o'clock in the morning when they crucified him. Next, we are going to have, we're going to have Zephaniah. Psalms 156, let everything that breathes sing praise, sing praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Amen. <laughs> Next, we are going to have Tyler. The Lord himself will fight for you. Just stay calm. Exodus 14 and 14. Amen. <laughs> Next, we are going to have Zion. <laughs> May the Lord smile on you and be gracious to you. That was number 625. Next, we're going to have Zane. <laughs> may, the, may the Lord show you his favor and give you his peace. Number 6 and 26. <laughs> <laughs> Next, we are going to have Isaiah. For I could do everything through Christ who gives me strength. Philippians chapter 4, verse 13. Good job. Next, we're going to have Kehlani. May the Lord bless you and protect you. Number 6, verse 24. Next, we, next, we're going to have Ari. Jesus died on Calvary, and he rose for you and me, and he told you to, to come unto me. Amen. Amen. <laughs> next, we're going to have uh, Azai. Next, we're going to have Alice with a poem. Uh, my poem is called The Story of Easter by me, Alice Ball. Holy Week comes once a year. It is important to hold it dear. Today is Resurrection Sunday, the time we look back on that one day. Jesus rode his colt through town as his followers laid their palm leaves down. He had a final supper to gather with his friends. He talked about the bread and wine and told them, remember till the end. In the garden, as Jesus prayed, he told his disciples to watch, but they laid. Then the guards came and took him away, but not before Judas got his pay. Jesus was put on trial. It was not a time to smile. A thorny crown was made for him, pressed on the head of a lamb who did not sin. As he carried his cross, he didn't count it a loss. It was part of God's plan to die at the hand of man. Jesus died on the cross to save us from sin, but he did it so that in the end it was a win. He rose three days later with those scars in his hand, 
Then he spoke to his disciples and rose from the land. It may be fun to hunt for eggs and play games, but always remember, Jesus reigns. Amen. That was beautiful. Ne Amen. Next we're going to have Cami. Cami with a poem. Kamai. We're going to have Kamai with a poem. Your love for me. I do not know how way the punishment you knew will come. Amen. Next, we're going to have Sanai. S Sani. You came from your throne, so I'll never be alone. You paid a price for my soul, proud with gloom and your clothes torn for someone like us to be redeemed. Yay. Good job. Amen. Natalia. You're beaten and bruised, lifeless body moves to your feet. Wrapped in white linen where you laid for the price you paid for me and mankind. Mary Madeline returned to the tomb and you were not there. You had risen to give life and set free those who believe. In whom we come set free is free indeed. Amen. We're going to have JB. Nailed to the cross for you and me. Nails in his hands and nails in his feet pierced in his side to be sure he wasn't alive, and three days later, he would arrive. Amen. Thank God. Amen. That, that was beautiful. Thank you guys to all the parents that participated. Thank you. Let's, uh, let's celebrate the kids again. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. That's a beautiful thing. Because in this season that we're living in, uh, you could be seeing this one brief moment, is that this world is going away from the children and they're teaching them that God's not who he is. And some of you that's older, y'all remember those days when you had your little Sunday Easter so it's so beautiful to see that again. Amen. Amen. And we got to do what we can do to train up a child in the way they would go. And they will not depart. It's so essential that we let them know that God is real. Is that right? Yes. Amen. Let's give them one more round of applause. Okay, we got too late, too late kids and we and you know they study we're gonna let them do their part all right come on come on come on come on jeffrey and, uh just come on. hallelujah hallelujah all right you remember jeffrey you killed You killed the author of life, but God raised him from the dead, and we are witness of this fact. Acts 3, verse 15. You killed the author of life, but God raised him from the dead, and we are witness of this fact. He canceled the records and charges against us and took it away by nailing it to the cross. Colossians 2.14. Give it a good. Good job. Good job. Amen. It's very memorable. Amen. And we want to again appreciate all the parents that 
help the children remember those scriptures. God is real. Do I have a witness? He's real. He said, take a child to lead them. We must pour into them, amen, so they can pour into others. And God is so good, amen. I'm not going to hold you any longer. I'll go, oh, by way of announcements, please keep Pastor Parker in prayer. He had a little um, challenge, and we're going to believe God for him to break through that. He would have been here, but the enemy's fighting him. And we know that God is able, and we know God answers prayer. Amen. And I was telling Terry, I said, that's how you learn prayer. When you don't get your answer right away, you keep praying until it manifests. So we're going to keep believing God for his total healing. <laughs> Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. So, Pastor Parker, if you're looking online, be encouraged. We're praying you through. We love you. We appreciate you. We can't wait for you to get back. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. We thank God for all our visitors and all our guests today. Amen. And you don't have to stand. We're going to go to the book of Ezekiel, chapter 37, verse 1. Those of you who've been in church a long time, you know this scripture. I was only going to read a couple of verses because I didn't want to prolong the service. But everybody doesn't know the word of God. Everybody doesn't read. So I'm going to go ahead and read these verses. And so we can all be in it together. Um, I'll read a few verses and then wherever I stop off, I'll let you know you pick it up. Okay? It's Ezekiel, the book of Ezekiel, chapter 37, start at the first verse. And the hand of the Lord was upon me, and he carried me out in the spirit of the Lord and sat me in the midst of the valley, which was full of bones. And he caused me to pass by round about. This is the King James Version. Behold, there are very many in the open valley, and lo, they were very dry. And he said unto me, Son of man, can these bones live? And I answered, O Lord, thou knoweth. Altogether, verse 4. Thus saith the Lord God unto these bones, Behold, I will cause breath to enter into you, and you shall live. Altogether. So I prophesied as I was commanded, and as I prophesied, there was a noise, and behold, a shaking. And the bones came together, bone to his bone. And when I beheld, lo, the sinews and the flesh came upon them, and the skin covered them above, and there was no breath in them altogether. So I prophesied, he commanded me, and the breath came into them, and they lived, and stood upon their feet, an exceeding great army, all together. Then he said unto me, Son of man, these bones are the whole house of Israel. Behold, they say, our bones are dry, and our hope is lost, and we are cut off from our parts. Somebody look at your neighbor and say, neighbor, experience a resurrection. Now, for a foundation text, again, for those who are not too familiar with scripture, the Apostle Paul gives us a New Testament revelation and understanding about resurrection. I'm going to read six verses concerning that. In 1 Corinthians chapter 15, verse 19 through 24, Paul says this, this is very important. If in this life only we have hope in Christ, we are all men most miserable. But now is Christ risen from the dead 
and become the first fruit of them that slept. For since by man came death, and by man came also the resurrection of the dead. For in Adam all die, so in Christ shall all be made alive. Yes. Verse 23, but every man in his own order, Christ the first fruits after they have the Christ coming. Then coming the end, and he shall deliver up the kingdom of God, even the Father, when he shall have put down all rule and authority and power. For he, which is Jesus, must reign till he put all enemies under his feet. Last verse, verse 26. And the last enemy that shall be destroyed is death. Somebody say, I will experience a resurrection. According to the prophet Ezekiel, in our text in verse 37, the prophetic word of Ezekiel, the vision brings our attention to God and his ability to bring death, dead things to life. The vision is intended not only to comfort the despairing, despairing children of Israel, which was a nation at that time was scattered and lifeless, but he gave this prophecy to destroy them, and to restore them to their home, in their faith, and a refreshing of their spiritual life. So God uses this vision to impress them of a great truth, that the God they serve has the power of resurrection. Our religion is not based on our opinions. We are very opinionated, and you know that on the internet, anybody with a computer can launch an opinion and, and talk about anything they want to uh, regarding that truth that they believe or an opinion, but it doesn't make it a fact. So religion, our religion is not based on opinions. Our religion is based on fact. We tend to, in our age, where people would say, that's your view, but this is my view. I don't know if you experienced that, but I have. And that's how you feel about it, but this is how I feel about it. I've always said that being the fact that I wasn't raised in church. I'm old school, come from the street. As I read the Bible, there's nowhere in there where he asked me my opinion about his kingdom. Nowhere in there I find it. He says, well, the wages of sin, or he was saying we have eternal life, or God is grace. Well, what do you think about that? No, it doesn't say that. But he gives us an understanding of the principles of his kingdom. And so we have to make sure we understand God's view in his issues of the world and the facts. Amen? Amen. If I want to have a firm foundation in who God is and what God has for me, I must remember his fact. As a matter of fact, the gospel is not about fabrication, but is about fact. Yes. So what is the fact? Scripture teaches us that Christ was incarnate. Christ was God in the flesh. That's a fact. He lived the life of holiness, shared love, and he died on the cross for my sins. That's a fact. Can y'all help me today? His death provides eternal life. He repaired the breakdown between us and the relationship with God, which is reconciliation. He, his death gives us eternal life, grace, hope, and justification. Which is teaching me that we're no longer guilty, but forgiven. He was buried in a tomb and raised from the grave in the third day. He rose again from the dead, amen. After he rose from the gate, he ascended unto the Father. And now he sits on the right hand of the Father. He is a mediator between God and man. And the Bible teaches us that he's going to come back a as a judge, amen. And he's going to bring back at that time the dead in Christ who have raised with him. Somebody say that's a fact. That's a fact. The psalmist wrote in Psalm 16 verses 10 and 11 that Christ died on the cross. He said, listen, because of that death, he says, listen, we don't have to leave my soul in hell and I will not suffer, amen, corruption but thou will show me the path of life. 
it is so essential, so essential in these times that we understand that there is a better life that we can experience, but that life is a life of faith. That Psalms also says that in the presence of the Lord is the fullness of joy, and at his right hand are pleasures forevermore. The resurrection means, amen, that God is teaching us that he has the ability to bring that which was dead back to life. That's important. I can say that about 90 times. I really think that's so important. God has shown us that he's using the prophetic word of Ezekiel. It's, it's also through other scriptures that God has the ability, because he's the creator of life, to bring dead things back to life. That is so essential. In today's world, we have what we call seeker-sensitive churches. These are churches or these are body of believers have constructed or organized a worship system that is appeasing the non-believer in their proclivities. They are not designed to minister to the believer and to raise them up, make them stronger. It is to go back from who they are and present a gospel to make it worldly and comfortable for whosoever. We know the Bible lets us know that whosoever will can come unto the Lord. Amen. But my kingdom in God is got principles. And in those principles, we have to be careful not to tell God what to do in his kingdom. A, seek, a seeker sensitive ministry or seeker sensitive principle is teaching, amen, now don't say the word death in the congregation. Don't use the term crucifixion because it has a bad uh, inclination. I like murder movies and kill them up. I like John Wick, one, two, three, and looking for four. No, four, two, and I'm looking for five. So don't tell me to be afraid about hearing death because that's all that thing is about, for killing people. Look at y'all looking at money. Y'all got HBO, Netflix all over on your file. Come on now. What I'm trying to say is we tend to look one way and ignore the other. We say we don't want to offend a non-believer by showing blood or saying the word of blood. But here's the truth of the matter. The truth of the matter is this. Without the shedding of blood, there's no remission of sin. That's the truth of the matter. So... In presenting the gospel, if I don't mention any of those terms, if I remove sin from the question, there's no point for Jesus to go to the cross. There is no gospel. And if I'm worshiping Jesus then, then my religion is full of idolatry, it is full of paganism, and there's nothing for my spirit. We must talk about the blood. I believe I got six saved folks in here that know that song the blood still works that know the song there's power in the blood oh i wish i had a church and where my six people at and my six people i want you to say i know that's right praise the living god but without the shedding of blood i wouldn't be standing here teaching to you but it was the blood that was shed for me Ah, oh, come on here. I take it personal. It was shed for me. Hallelujah. See, he had, certain, he had certain statements over that cross when he was nailed. Amen. We're talking about the Latin word. Now, I'm not going to try to impress nobody with theological impressions. I'm going to keep it simple. Amen. It was these names and terms on there. But I want to tell you, I would erase all that, put my name on top of his head. Amen. I'm dying for Dennis. Glory to God. These crowns are for Dennis. I'm holding on for Dennis. I've got whipped for Dennis. I'm going to take all of what Dennis did, what Dennis can do, or what Dennis might do. I'm going to put it all on this cross. Oh, glory to God. All the blood going down. I'm doing it for Dennis. And I come to tell you all today, thank be to God for the victory. I can stand here today in Christ Jesus. Or do we have anybody in here that got that testimony? Oh, hallelujah. Paul tells us, amen, but without the resurrection, we are most miserable. 
But we have to understand that in this journey of life, amen, we experience certain death experiences in our life. Amen. Some things die in our life and some things die prematurely. I like what the scripture says in the book of, uh, I think it's in uh, Psalms, where he says, listen here, we all go in the way of the world. Amen. This world was not created to last forever. But unfortunately, because we have an enemy who goes about roaring as a lion, he takes people's lives prematurely. We have so many funerals now. People are dying like death is on sale. Uh, but I'm not going to buy that. Do I have a witness here? I don't know about you, but I don't want to die prematurely. I want to finish my course and I want to do it with joy. But I understand that it's natural. We all going to leave here one day. We ain't going to stay here forever. But death signifies something in another realm. Not just physically, but let's talk about the experiences that we can have in our life. Death can signify inactivity. Death can signify a malfunction. Death can, figure, can signify something going on in my life that doesn't work the way it's supposed to. Something happened in my life, it doesn't work like it's supposed to. I'm not supposed to be depressed. I'm not supposed to go from day to day wish I was dead. I'm not supposed to just live with no kind of goal. I'm not supposed to try to fill my life with things that I do and hope that there's substance in it. That's not what God created me. He created me for a purpose. Come on, y'all can understand that when something doesn't work the way it's supposed to. You can have a battery in your car or in your remote. Let's do that because now everybody got a remote. And you get there with that remote and you say, okay, I want to look at something. You're clicking, clicking, clicking. Ain't nothing happening. The next first thing you know, maybe my Wi-Fi is out. Um, something happened with the TV. But what's wrong is you had an apparatus that wasn't working the way it was supposed to because the battery was dead. We got light bulbs. This has happened to me too. You got a light bulb. You want a light in the room, you're just clicking and clicking. The light won't turn on. When I look at it, it looks like it's working. When I look at it, it looks like it's supposed to give me light. But when I hit the switch, nothing happens. Things in our lives, praise God, we know that things should be better. But because of the circumstances, it doesn't work the way it's supposed to. How do we relate with that? We relate with that because of the fact that, amen, when we see, amen, life work like that, we need a resurrection. We need a battery change. Come on here. We need to get rid of the dead bulb and put a live one in there. Come on here. We got areas in our lives that are not fulfilling the desire that God has created me to be. I got to get back on track with my creator. My hopes and dreams are gone. I just go from day to day. Come on here. The career that I was trying to build up dropped like a bucket. My marriage is jacked up. My relationships are not coming together. Amen. I don't get along with my parents no more. That's not the way it's supposed to work. Amen. I can't stand my kids. That's not supposed to work like that. Amen. Me and my brothers and sisters can't get along. That's not supposed to work like that. Do I have a witness in here? Hallelujah. What I need then is to experience the power of God in my life and the power of resurrection. Jesus tells us that Christ came and in him was the life and the life was the light of men. Amen. It's not God's will in my life for me to live a life that's stagnant and dry and I'm going from day to day like a dead man walking. I used to live like that. I was a dead man walking. I was trying to do everything I could to make my life worth living and nothing satisfied. Amen. So when people come to church, they think we all, amen, don't know what is about to go through life. But I got, forget my six, I got about 50 folks in here to say, yes, I found out what life really is when I met Jesus. Are you in the house? Well, come on here. Somebody clap their hands and say, I know that's right. 
Come on now, I was going through life. I come to find out there's something better. In Christ, I found out there's something better. I was going down the wrong track because the world was teaching me a wrong message. But Christ came to bring us hope. Christ came to bring hope where there is no hope. And I ain't got nothing to say today, but thank be unto God. And I was glad when they said unto me, let us go into the house of the Lord. Am I perfect? No. Amen. Do I make mistakes? Yes. Come on here. Does God get mad at me sometimes? Yes. Did he get disappointed? Yes. But I come to tell y'all because I know what it is now. I'm over here to stay, Lord. I told him that this morning. I'm over here to stay until I die. I don't care what I experience, how I mess up. I don't care what goes on. I'm here. I'm in it to win it. Lord, have mercy. When I was in the world, I was in it to win it. But now I'm over here in Christ. Come on now. Let me get to my text. When we look at the book of Ezekiel chapter 31, 37, we see something very important as we look at Ezekiel's vision. Amen. We know it's a tip, it's a metaphor of dry bones. The dry bones which are referring to the nation of Israel. And as the, begin, the vision begins, we find that Ezekiel finds himself in the midst of a valley, a low place. He finds himself in a low place, and that low place is full of dryness, full of dead bones. Isn't it interesting? That when we are in our lowest place, that's how I found God. I was in the valley of life. I was in a valley of being tired. Tired of running the streets, tired of getting high, tired to try to make it my way. Hallelujah. I was in the valley. And when you're in the valley of life, that is where you can get a sure revelation of who God is long as you're not in the valley and everything's going great, you ain't never going to want God. But God will mess up your life. He, oh, I wish I had a believer in here. He'll mess with your life and say, here, I'm doing this. When I do this, you're going to see the light and walk there in it. Do I have a witness? So I thank God for the problem. I thank God for the sicknesses. I thank God for the disappointments. Come on here. Amen. David said, I was glad when I was afflicted. Glory to God. That's when I got a vision of who God is. So the temptation, amen, is that when I get the vision, we see, praise God, there is no hope. I can see Ezekiel now looking at a valley full of dry bones. That's hopeless. That's a hopeless situation. I've seen that, amen, where you go down the street and somebody sat there or an animal died and there's a bunch of dry bones there because all the, uh, the vultures that had it, the road is messed with it. Come on, somebody. And it's just dry and crackling. Amen. Y'all looking at me funny. Y'all know y'all got no chicken bones. Fall out your trash laying in the front of your house. Come on now, I'm just messing with you. Listen, it's a temptation that when you see dryness in your life, the first thing crosses your mind. There's no hope. Especially if you've been there a long time. Ain't gonna hold. I'll never get out of this. I can I can't get saved. I can't can't change my home front. I can't, I can't get better. I'll never be what I feel in my spirit, what God is telling me I could be for him. It will never happen. Living a life that is hopeless. Living a life without hope. In a situation without hope. Going for work day to day, no hope. Riding up the street trying to be happy by eating and by partying and by going through all these things. We're doing it with no hope. Glory to God. Do I have a witness? I heard somebody say, I've been there. <laughs> Praise the living God. Somebody right now is in a situation you feel hopeless. But I come here this morning to tell you on this Easter morning, hallelujah, that that is a trick of the devil. Amen. It's a trick of the devil. You're talking to somebody who has attempted suicide, and that's simply because I felt as though in that situation, there is no hope. And I sat there and said, why God made me? It ain't fair. I'm out of here. But thank be to God that the God I serve has greater Oh, glory to God. That's why the devil can't kill you. That's why you're here today. That's why God has given you another chance because God is greater and in him there is hope. Oh, bless the name of God. I can praise him right there because God says, listen, I'm hope for the hopeless. 
going to church, no Sunday school, don't know scripture, but I know there's a God, I know there's a hell and a heaven, but I was living hopeless. But God says, you ain't going nowhere because I got to make you a preacher. Oh, come on here. What? Are you serious? God sees greater in you than you see for yourself. You got to see God for your life and not you for who you are. God got greater for you than how you were living. Somebody give him a praise right there. Oh, hallelujah. We almost done. Tell your neighbor there's hope for the hopeless. Oh, they ain't looking at you funny. They ain't talking to you. You just say it over your own life. There's hope for the hopeless. Hallelujah. The devil will make you think and go through life that life ain't worth living. Amen. That there is no hope. But the devil is a liar, wonder, and the truth ain't in him. We're not going to go any further in this crazy world that life will not change. Being stuck in the rut. Amen. Going from day to day in, in an endless day dead end street but I want you to know praise God that God's got you don't let that devil tell you you can't never change don't let that devil tell you you can never change you can never be saved don't let the devil tell you you'll never get out of debt don't let the devil tell you your home will never be happy don't let the devil you have to always live in defeat I come to tell you that when you come over on the jaw on the Lord's side the joy of the Lord will be your strength do I have a witness here don't live like those who are in the world. Those in the world are down the street, man. I'm telling you, they're going around. I don't know if they still say that because I'm out of the world now. They would say, well, you're talking about hell. I'm living hell now. I ain't afraid of hell. I'm living hell today. Well, I got news for whoever say that. I'm going to tell them that is another lie. That's a lie from the devil to tell you that you're living in a hopeless situation uh, and you experience a hellish life. No, all you do is you are in trouble but I come to tell you that there is a savior that'll get you out of trouble I come to tell you there's a savior that'll bring you out of your pit take you from the valley and put you on a mountain I come to tell you there's a God that take every crooked place and make it straight I come to tell you there's no place there's no low you can go there's no sin you can experience in this life outside of blaspheming the Holy Ghost that God can't fix I don't care how sick you are there's no sickness that God can't heal I come to tell you that's why he came as a carpenter to teach us that Jesus can fix it. Do I have a witness in here? He could have been anything. He could have been a bricklayer. He could have been a road man. He could have been a garbage man. He could have been, come on now, but he teaches us, amen, that Jesus can fix it. And before he came here, God in the flesh, when he was in the Old Testament, the revelation was that he's the potter and we're the clay. That your life is messed up, I'll break it down and then I get the tools and put it all back together I take out everything that's not good uh, and make you beautiful to behold I come to tell you uh, I may be in the fire now I may be in the burner but when I come out I'm coming out like pure gold do I have anybody in here that got a testimony come on here David said why be cast down on my soul I want you to know together can you just say one last thing I ain't gonna bother you no more tell your neighbor neighbor hope thou in God my hope is in nothing else but Jesus Christ in his righteousness hope thou in God uh, and David said listen because I hope in God that's how I would praise him because God is my savior he's my God uh, and I want you to know that I'm able to endure come on somebody that's why the Bible lets us know that we got the hope hope is confident expectation I don't see the answer now but my answer is not in my situation my answer is in what God has promised over my life uh, come on somebody somebody say my answer is on the way Ezekiel amen got, got, got challenged uh, come on I want you to get a pictorial I want you to get a pictorial Jesus got uh, Ezekiel got challenged just look at he look at the valley of bones everything's dry it looked like there's no hope there's an end and praise God but God was using him for a revelation God was using him to teach us that God has the power of revelation a re res resurrection so he asked Ezekiel look at the situation can and these bones live I challenge somebody today look at the hell you've been in this year forget COVID this year come on here can these bones live look at the come on the fightings within and the fightings without 
Do can these bones live? Look at your doctor's appointments. Can these bones live? Look at the arguments you've been having. Can these bones live? Losing that job, losing this job. And come on here. God, Lord, have mercy, Jesus. I want you to know Jesus can work it out. Somebody say yes. Can these bones live? Yes. He asked his Ezekiel a crazy question, but he was doing something marvelous. Amen. He was not only asking the question, but he was also going to give him a command. Praise the living God. Uh, he looks at Ezekiel and tells him, can these bones live? And he says, Lord, oh, thou knowest. Uh, amen. He had a little confidence. He couldn't really see what God was trying to do. A lot of times God is trying to do great things in our lives uh, but we can't see it because of the situation amen the enemy is a master distractor we're in it and don't think that God can't fix it one of these days I'm gonna preach about addictions and one of these days I'm gonna tell y'all praise God uh, about he's messing around with being addicted to things uh, and when you're addicted to things in your natural consciences you don't think you can get a breakout you think that you are stuck in the rut come on here I come to tell you my God can deliver I don't care how long it takes well I've been struggling for 10 years uh, oh come on somebody you, you gotta talk to your neighbor because some of y'all ain't talking just lift your hands and say so what amen I've been sick for 20 years somebody say so what come on here things been going crazy in my family for a long time somebody say so what amen I'm still having the hate and bitterness in my heart from what happened to my child Childhood, and I don't think I will ever change somebody say so what I come to tell you that God is able uh, to do exceedingly and abundantly uh, above all you ask a thing amen Ezekiel do you think life will come in these dry bones uh, he says oh Lord you know it uh, see that is a very discouraging statement uh, just like they used to say back in slavery uh, amen they wrote songs they said God knows uh, the trouble I'm in uh, amen they was looking at the negative situation that they were in uh, and I got an answer for anybody that got that song uh, oh yes he knows your trouble uh, he knows you're going in and you're coming out uh, he knows your thoughts are far off uh, he knows what's on your mind right now uh, he knows where you're going after service uh, my God has a all seeing eye uh, he's sovereign God is real uh, do I have a witness uh, do I have a witness in the church uh, that God is real uh, we can't hide from God uh, he is real uh, he knows my going in my coming out he knows my heart he knows me better than I do uh, oh yes he does uh, that's why he keeps me from doing some things because uh, he know if he let me do it I'll stay in trouble uh, thank you be to God uh, that I serve a God that will love me so much uh, that even though while I was yet in sin uh, Christ died for me uh, he said I know what Dennis is capable of uh, but I'm not going to let Dennis get in trouble uh, but so far uh, he didn't let me destroy my life uh, he didn't let me amen go over the deep end uh, but he kept on pulling uh, he kept on pulling me out of my situation uh, why because he says this uh, I am a God that's at every present help in the time of trouble uh, thank you be to God uh, that no matter what you go through uh, God is there uh, I want you to remember that uh, this Sunday morning uh, that when you leave the house of God uh, and get in your own situation without him uh, amen based on your habits uh, you got to remember what God says uh, he's a very present help in the time of trouble uh, I feel about 10 of y'all are in trouble today uh, oh no not y'all they online uh, they are in trouble uh, come on here uh, and the devil's telling them you're never coming out uh, but I come to tell you uh, you can experience the power of his resurrection uh, the psalmist didn't stop there either uh, the psalmist said he is my very strength 
strength in the time of trouble. In other words, when I'm weak, he can be strong. When I want to give up, he'll come on, when I want to give in, he'll take me up. I want you to know the Bible teaches me that God will help us. Amen. He'll deliver the wicked from the adversary. They that trust in the Lord, come on here, shall renew their strength. We will mount up with wings of eagles. We may be running, but we won't faint not. Do I have a witness today? Life may seem like they don't make no sense. Come on here. It didn't make sense for him to tell him, Look, is any life coming out of this? See, God will ask you some things to do in your life. God will challenge you in your life, and it doesn't make sense. But he is challenging what you think about his wisdom. Do I have a witness today? God is doing this. I want Ezekiel to see that when I give a word in a life, that it will come to pass. I'm going to teach him something. Tat somebody say, I'm getting ready to teach you something. I uh, say not me God uh, God's about to teach you something huh? God's about to teach you something what God was going to teach him uh, I'm going to give him a word uh, because God has confidence in himself uh, that when he speaks of things it would accomplish the purpose uh, and when he sense it uh, so God will challenge uh, I never forget praise God when I was in the world uh, he challenged me to go to church uh, come on God uh, he challenged me to go to church hoping uh, that that would be the day that I say yes Lord uh, come on somebody uh, I'm sitting there with, with, with pot in my pocket uh, cigarettes in my shirt uh, come on here looking at all the women in the church uh, come on here looking at what's going on uh, I was a mess uh, but God says no I'm going to pull you out your situation uh, and I got this uh, that when you hear my word uh, I got confidence in my word it won't return to me void uh, amen I still went out there and act like a knucklehead uh, got in the car rode the joint and then parked it was a Easter Sunday come on here y'all don't know nothing about that God says but I ain't studying what you do it I got confidence in my word and when my word take a root in your spirit you gonna have to answer to it somebody say thank God why is that so important because in the beginning was the word and the word was with God and the word was God somebody say thank God for the word and the word we got victory somebody I'm about to say thank God uh, God was showing Ezekiel uh, I'm going to give you a plan for victory uh, I'm going to give you a plan for recovery uh, I'm going to give you a prophecy uh, amen for the situation uh, I hope somebody's listening today uh, because God's going to tell you to say something uh, over your life to bring you out uh, God's going to get you engaged with him uh, and give you a confidence that you ain't got to leave here uh, the same way you can Amen. You may not come to the altar. You may not ask for prayer. But God says, my word will not return to me void. It will accomplish. My word's got power. I use the word to create the world. I came as a word. I came as a revelation of myself in the person of Jesus Christ. Somebody say, yes, Lord. God said, tell that dead, dry place to come forth. I want you to know today uh, if you can muster up enough faith uh, and say my life gonna change for God uh, I don't care how dead it is uh, I don't care how dry it is uh, my life gonna change for God uh, somebody say yes Lord uh, somebody say yes Lord uh, for man shall not live by bread alone uh, but by every word that proceeded out uh, of the mouth of God uh, where is the Christians at in here uh, where are the believers uh, amen anybody here got a praise uh, when God gave you a word uh, thank you Jesus uh, see sometimes they say I don't know the Bible uh, but God doesn't always quote scripture uh, he'll tell you don't quit uh, oh Lord uh, he'll tell you don't give up uh, come on somebody uh, see because every word that proceeds out of his mouth uh, has a life uh, God will tell you I see you weak uh, but I'm strong 
strong. Somebody say, thank God. Somebody say, have your way, Lord. I don't know about you, but when I'm going through life, I need a word. I need God to remind me that I can make it. And when he talks to me in the Bible, when he talks to me in a service, I get encouraged because faith come by hearing. And hearing what? Hearing the word of God. For the word of his grace is able to build me up and give me inheritance among them that are sanctified. What is the devil giving me? When I don't have Jesus, he ain't giving me nothing. He'll give me debts, surcharges. Oh, Lord. Headaches. Come on here. What is he giving me? Bad relationships. Bad decisions. Incarcerations. My God, my God. He's a dirty player. Do I have a witness here? He never treated me right when I was in the world. That's why he can't get me to backslide. Because I've been there, done that. Somebody say yes, Lord. And it done got worse since I've been there. So what you going to give me? I'm going to stall on to Jesus. And I know he's able to answer prayer. I'm going to hold on to the word of his grace. Which is able to build me up. And give me an inheritance. Amongst them that are sanctified. Somebody say yes, Lord. And so what was the command he gave Ezekiel? He said, Ezekiel, speak this prophetic word over this dead place. He said, I want you to get this word and tell these word, these bones to come up. Amen. So he said, listen here. When you speak to those bones, when you speak to that dead place, I'm going to cause a life to come in it. That's the key right there. I pray you didn't miss it. That you can speak life in your situation if it is God. You can speak it in your will, but your will ain't good enough. You need God's will. You need God's power. God's power is greater than you. Do I have a witness here? Oh God, help me today. See, I used to get high in the world, but I couldn't get high on my own. I had to smoke it, drink it. I had to snort it, and I refused to shoot it, but I did it on my own. I did it with the help of something else. Y'all ain't saying nothing. I could not get that high on my own. I couldn't get that feeling on my own. Do I have a witness in here? But when I came on over on the lower side, I don't need to smoke it. I don't need to drink it. All I got to do is think of the goodness of Jesus. I'll start smiling on my face. I get scared when you talk about Jesus. We living in a time now where they don't want you to say Jesus. Watch out for the name. It's like saying a curse word. I'm getting ready to get somebody to get scared. Don't worry if they start walking out. But I got something against the devil in me. Jesus, Jesus, Jesus. It's still got power in the name of Jesus. Why is it so power? Because when I say Jesus, I'm saying God. Somebody say yes, Lord. Jesus said, when you see me, you see the Father. Do I have 20 folk in here? Can you just say Jesus? Can I have 30 folk in here? And can't say Jesus? Can I have 70 y'all say? Just say Jesus. You're scared to say it. What's wrong? If you don't know him, come on over on the lower side and get to know Jesus. That's what Easter is about. It's about that God came in the flesh. Can I have one minute here? That God came in the flesh. Can I can I preach like I want to? Just think about it. We're talking about the creator of heaven and earth. The one that created the birds, the bees, the seasons, the trees and the rivers and the mountains. My God, my God. They still finding things in the ocean and discovering insects and animals. Amen in the world. God spoke it and it was so. And God says, listen here. That I want man to know me. Come on here because he had created Adam. Amen in his image and likeness. And so God. Adam sinned against God. Sin is separation. And God says me and Adam together. 
I walk in the cool of his day. Uh, but Adam sinned against God. Uh, didn't take crack. Didn't take cocaine. Uh, didn't take fornication of sin. Uh, it took disobedience. Uh, and now there's a separation. Uh, but because God is love. Uh, God loved mankind so much. Uh, I created this man in my image. Uh, he ain't no offspring. Uh, he ain't no, uh, no alien. Uh, he's supposed to be like me. Uh, so God says, what I'm going to do. Uh, I tell you what I'm going to do. Uh, I'm going to let everybody know uh, that I'm coming. Uh, Y'all ain't saying it. Uh, I'm going to let everybody know uh, I'm his savior. Uh, thank you. God, watch this, watch this. And so God gives a prophetic word. I'm going to be like he is to draw him to where I am. And then God tells a woman that godly thing in your spirit shall come forth and is going to be called the son of God. Now God is in flesh. You can't see a spirit. Can't touch a spirit. Can't come on now. God said in the spirit world, they don't know me I'm going to be like them so we can touch each other we can hug each other I'm going to be like them and I'm going to be tempted in all points just like he is and that's why when he was on the cross they put the nail in his wrist his hand didn't stay out like they show you in the pictures but because it broke the nerve his fingers was grabbed because it like it was stuck because it hit the wrist uh, a certain nerve uh, God is showing me uh, no man uh, can take this man out of my oh lord i want him to know when he see the cross that no man you ain't got a backslide you ain't got to be lost just keep the connection somebody say thank god he stayed on the cross my god my god he stayed there until deliverance came until he died he gave up the ghost i can praise god now because i serve a god God, uh, who's a God that can change direction. Uh, he's a God that's personal. Uh, he ain't this thing they trying to show you uh, in the pictures that they created uh, in the movies they make. Uh, God is real. Uh, if it wasn't for God, uh, I'd be dead today. Uh, and because he is real, uh, I can praise him. Uh, can I have somebody uh, praise my God? Can you praise? You don't know like I know. I'm going old school. What the Lord has done for me, you can't tell it like I tell it. He's real. He's real. Jesus is real to me. Oh, where my church at? Oh. Oh, he's real, he's real, he's real. Now say it like you mean it, and say, Jesus, Jesus, Jesus. Think about what you need, and say, Jesus. Almost done. He's real. I said he's real. The sad thing is, I preached last Sunday, I believe, but help my unbelief, I believe. People believe it, but they don't believe it. But he told Ezekiel, prophesy. Speak a prophetic word to that dead situation. It looks dead and dry, lifeless, nothing coming out of it. But I'm going to tell you to do something that's blowing your mind. Speak to it. Speak a word. And if you obey me and speak that word, I'm going to cause life to come in it. If you don't come in agreement with God, you will never experience 
the power of his resurrection. The sad thing about that situation, look at this. The valley was full of people who were once alive, but are now dead. Not just dead, come on, but dry. Can I still keep it real? I know how it is to go through life with a dead situation. Thinking ain't no life can come in it. Dry as a chuck. I've been there. Matter of fact, there's a situation in my life now that I need a resurrection in it. Lord, help me, God. But God says, I'll give you a word for that situation. But when you speak the word, you got to let the power of God bring manifestation. God says, my word is going to have it come alive. There was a lot of good in them people. I'm going to say it again. Y'all ain't seeing it. There's somebody out there now. I meant, I meant it was out there giving away free gas and stuff. And I'm, that's all about me. I had to get out of my car. Who are y'all? What's going on? And in doing that, some people that know me as a pastor came. Used to come to the church and laugh or whatever. Strung out. And I was sitting there listening to him, praying for them. And no matter what that girl said, yeah, I'm prostituting and getting high and, and doing me. I said, girl, no matter what the devil do to you, don't give up. Don't give up. That's right. I don't care how low he take you. Don't give up the fact that he can keep you from dying. You got to no, there's still some good in you. You may be looking at me online or you may be in here. You don't want God. But there's still some good in you. And I'm going to say this in my conclusion. You ain't finished yet. I don't care how sick you are broke you are, what's going on in your life, you are not finished yet. God woke you up. He gave you another chance to make it. Don't let that devil tell you it's over. Don't let that tell you you can't be saved. Come on now. Don't let that devil tell you there ain't no way out your situation. I thought that many times in my life. Praise God. Don't let that devil fool you. But here is the revelation. <laughs> While he's talking to them bones, God said, I'm going to put my spirit in it. And while he was talking to that situation, God performed a miracle. Oh, come on. If you can have enough faith in your life. They say, I, I know I can change. I know, I know there's better for me. I know there's greater in me. I know I, I, I can make it. Oh, uh, come on. Now. I want to end because it's Easter, but I, I know what it is to have a job, and I know what it is to have a profession, and I, I can't never see nothing good come out of this. I'm going to always pour. I ain't never going to have nothing. Uh, praise the living God. Uh, but something inside of me told me to go ahead. Uh, something to tell me said, don't give up. Uh, uh, you tried once, but God stopped me. Uh, is there anybody here besides me? Uh, you thank God that he stopped you uh, for doing something so foolish uh, that you can't make a turnaround huh? but because you're here today huh? God gave you the victory huh? to make a turnaround huh? if you can speak over your life huh? he will make a miracle huh? come in your life huh? somebody will say victory
victory uh, belongs to me. Uh, and while uh, God was pouring out his spirit, uh, there was a noise and a shaking. Uh, God said, I'm pulling things together. Uh, I'm creating relationship. Uh, I'm creating another relationship uh, in this assignment. Uh, God wants you to join the hymn today. Uh, he wants you to come up higher. Uh, don't let the devil trick you. Uh, he's doing it in the church. Uh, he's bringing division. Uh, he's doing it in families. Uh, he's got division. Uh, he's doing it in the home. Uh, he's got division. Uh, that's the devil's plan uh, to divine and conquer. Uh, he wants to keep us separated. Uh, he wants to keep us isolated. Uh, somebody say help us God. Uh, he wants us to be lifeless, hopeless. Uh, but God let me know. Uh, greater is he that is in us uh, than he that is in the world. Uh, Y'all ain't saying that in here. Uh, I ran across a scripture. Uh, I never saw it before. Uh, Ecclesiastes 9 and 4. Uh, he said, but if anyone who is alive uh, in the world of the living, uh, they have hope. Uh, they, even if you live like a dog, uh, come on here. Uh, it's better to live like a dog uh, than to die like a lion. Uh, Y'all ain't saying that in here. Uh, what's the revelation? Uh, you think you're a lion? Because uh, you think you can outsmart God. Uh, you're strong in yourself. Uh, you're strong in your attitude. Uh, but I come to tell you, uh, for those that may not have a home, uh, amen, a car, a money, uh, you don't have the support system. Uh, you feel like a dog. Uh, it's better to live like a dog uh, than to die like a lion. Uh, do I have a witness here? Uh, I ain't going to let the kill kid me. Uh, when you hear the dog's name, uh, it causes an offense. Uh, but that is a revelation. Because uh, sometimes life will make you low. Uh, but God will lift you up. Uh, somebody say, help us, God. Uh, somebody give God a praise. Uh, I won't leave y'all with this. Uh, the Bible teaches us uh, that, amen, that we can know him uh, in the power of his resurrection, uh, in the fellowship of his suffering, uh, being conformable to his death, uh, that by any means we may go uh, into the resurrection of the dead. Uh, Christ died that we can have more life. Uh, Christ died that we can live more. Uh, that's why he didn't take the vinegar. Uh, that's why he didn't take the vinegar mixed with gall. Uh, he wasn't finished yet. Uh, in the first time, uh, they offered him a refreshing. Uh, they wanted his death to be stagnant uh, and enduring and him to suffer. Uh, but he said, no, nah, I can't take it. Uh, it's going to numb the pain. Uh, I got to take the pain for Dennis. Uh, I got to take his addictions. Uh, I got to take his hate. Uh, I got to take his depression. Uh, I got to take his animosity. Uh, I got to take his resentment. Uh, I can't mess around now. Uh, I want to take all his pain. Uh, I can't get numb uh, to his feelings being hurt. Uh, feeling lonely and rejected. Uh, I got to take it all on me. Uh, and when he took it all on himself. Uh, my God, my God. Uh, God looked at Jesus. Uh, but Jesus was now Dennis. Uh, God closed his eyes. Uh, there was a darkness. Uh, glory to God for three hours. Uh, come on somebody. Uh, God was saying I can't look at Dennis. Uh, in that condition. Uh, but when the time was right. Uh, God opened up his eyes. Uh, Cause Jesus was saying. Uh, the time is over now. Uh, I'm about to get out of here. Uh, and he gave up the ghost. Uh, my God. My God. Uh, I can't live like Peter. Uh, who denied Christ three times. Uh, when the crisis came. Uh, and the trouble came in his life. Uh, he said I know not the man. Uh, no no matter what happened. Uh, I got to give God the praise. Uh, do I have a witness here? Uh, somebody say yes Lord. Uh, I don't care what's going on in the world. Uh, I was sharing the other day. Uh, November the 5th. The end of this month. This year. Uh, hell gonna break out. Uh, you can say what you wanna. Uh, call me a lion prophet if you wanna. Uh, but everybody's going crazy. Uh, man is angry. Uh, people are cutting people off. Uh, they don't want to talk about God in the church. Uh, people don't want to be saved. Uh, people are being backslidden in their actions. Uh, things are just going buck wild. Uh, yeah, I paid $9 for a cup of coffee. Uh, $6 for a loaf of bread. Uh, gas done went crazy. Uh, Y'all ain't seeing that 
here. Uh, but I come to tell you, uh, I got to have something greater, uh, greater than the trouble coming. Uh, I got to have something greater uh, than the dead things in my life. Uh, and that is get Jesus. He's the greater. What would a man? I'm done. Give an exchange for a soul. What does it profit a man to gain the whole world? I ain't do nothing in that world that helped me profit. That profited. Nope. Nope. Matter of fact, I had to get out of bankruptcy. That's what it did for me. Amen. I done got in trouble. World full of trouble. The God's a God that gets you out of trouble. Could you give me some keys? I'm going to let you go. Thank God for your coming. Wasn't the kids beautiful? I appreciate you coming. You could have worshipped God anywhere today, but you came, and we sincerely appreciate you. This year I'll be turning 72. They got pastors that have died before me. Life is a gift. I don't think I can live long forever. I did too much sin, and the wages of sin is death. But give God grace, I can live long. But I don't take life for granted I had to make a decision in the time of social media podcasts and people trying to get you to stay out of the church and just get online have an electronic relationship to practice religion like the Hindus the Buddhists that's what the enemy wants this last hour I had to make a decision been here 10 years almost, 10 years you try to do things to get people to come to church please everybody come to tell you you ain't gonna please everybody you got a family you can cook steak broccoli, black eyed peas and rice, mac and cheese potato salad somebody's still gonna come to their kitchen and say what you cook I don't want that. Can you give me some wild wings or something? You ain't going to please everybody. You're not going to please everybody. So I had to make a decision. Am I going to follow the course of this world or am I going to be a pastor? Knowing that it's God's flock. He's God's people. And I saw, Lord... Since I know I can die today, I'm going to say whatever I can to get somebody to say, you know what, what must I do to be saved? Today's salvation is a walk. It's a party. It's not a reality. And some people are even scared to trust God with their life. But you didn't die in that car accident. When the doctor gave you that report, you didn't die. God came in your life so many times. Don't let the devil tell you you can't trust him. I would never ask anybody to come to the Lord and then expect him to be a church member. That's not even in the scripture. Church membership is man-made. That's man-made. It's essential because we have to live. And operate, but the scripture says that when they came, they were called those of the way. And the Christians in Antioch was called, they were called Christians. I don't know who was really listening or who was waiting. When you preach, some people are listening, and some are waiting, and some are watching. I don't know who you are, but if you was listening, 
God is telling you, I need to just be honest with your life. I want to stop, but he's pulling me. We are so, we are so, we handle our lives so wrong. I'm quick to tell God I'm a mess. I was a mess, man. And being saved, I ain't trying to walk around like I'm an angel. I had a pastor say, how you doing? Shalom, shalom, blah, blah, blah. And he just kept going. I looked at that pastor in his face and said, one day I'm going to get saved like you. One day I'm going to get saved. He said, huh? <laughs> I like what Noel said. I'm, I'm too messy to be flashy. I need God. I don't know about y'all. When I thought I had cancer, I didn't want to die and go the wrong way. I want, I want God. And God ain't, ain't trying to pull you to take your money. He ain't trying to pull you to join the church. Okay, he ain't trying to pull you to fill the pew. He's pulling you to change your life and give it to you more abundantly. And then he'll tell you where to worship. Then he'll tell you how to praise him. He'll teach you. But the initial point is, Am I going to keep trying to live my life with all these dead things and try to handle it myself without God? Or am I going to say, yes, Lord, I'm going to try you? That's the decision. That's, that's the decision. Many of you have not made that decision. You're not ready. You're just not ready. I wasn't ready that Sunday because I knew I was going to get high after service. I wasn't ready. Right in, this, <laughs> right in the presence of God and the pastor saying it's holiness of hell. I mean, I'm going to get high after this service. I don't know what you'll call it now. It was good. I'm going to do it. Y'all know how, why y'all looking at me like I was crazy? I'm going to do me. I'm going to do me. God said, I ain't studying you because I know you have, God looks out the art, outward appearance and he sees the heart. You see, I know there's something greater in you. And then when the, that day came, I said, you know what, Lord, I'm tired. Yes. Whatever you're going to do, do it. I thank God today. I thank God today. I said I wasn't going to labor you. I'm done. I said I wasn't going to try to uh, put nobody on the spot. So if y'all could just, if you're able to, if you're not holding a baby or physically impaired and you can't stand, could you stand for one brief minute? This is my altar call, and this is just saying, is there someone to say, look, I got so many dead things in my life. And what I think about myself is a dead thing. I don't see my future, really. So the Bible says that he's a God of covenant. He's a God of agreement. So I'm saying, I'm going to give you one minute. I'm not going to, I'm not going to labor you. If you want to say, listen, somebody pray with me in agreement that I can make right decisions. Or you may want to just be saved. You may say, I got a dead place and I want life in it. Can you show me how to get to it? We're here. I'm not going to have you leave and not give you an opportunity to change. If there's one or two, just come around to the left, right over here and say, yeah, would you pray with me? It's just for prayer. It's just for prayer. It's up to you. I ain't going to try to make you do anything. It's up to you. It's up to you. I want life in my life. You know, every day. You know, some of y'all get peace by getting high. I, I get, that's why I talk about getting high all the time. Because that's what we're doing now. I, we, was, we was at the thing yesterday. I, they were blowing up. They were blowing up. Where'd you get them? Come over here. They were, blow, they were blowing up. They were blowing up. So that's what we do for peace and stuff. That's what we do. So if you want to get an agreement, if not, we're going to pray. I know we're in a um, post-COVID situation. And we, we, we're a little paranoid. Could could you could you take help me a little bit more and grab your neighbor by the hand? It may be somebody in your row, but they're scared to come up. Don't be scared to live. Don't be scared to live. 
Don't be scared to live. Well, we're going to pray, all right? This is Easter Sunday. Today is your day for resurrection. Don't be scared to live. 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 Say, well, don't misinterpret what I'm saying. You're alive, but are you living? Don't be scared to live. Father, in the name of Jesus, could y'all pray with them and see what they want prayer for? And we're going to pray. And I need you not just hold your neighbor hand, but can you just join me in prayer? That Father, in the name of Jesus, that you would. We thank you for giving us a reminder that you come, that we can have life and that more abundantly. And Lord, you know my situation. We pray for my neighbor. We pray for strength for my neighbor. We pray not just for my neighbor, but for myself. Lord, that one day I will give you a yes. One day I will give you what you want. Because you made me, you love me, and you died for me. And so, Lord, we ask you to help us. Help us in the name of Jesus. Fix us in the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus, we ask you, God we can walk with love and life in Jesus' precious holy name. Now clap your hands and let's thank God for blessing your neighbor. Thank you. Come on, thank God for blessing your neighbor. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. We're about to be dismissed. For those of you that brought your children, Amen. If y'all would be patient with them, I believe they're, they are set up um, some kind of way. If they're going to go out and find eggs or whatever, please be patient. Share love before you leave. Celebrate. But hold it, hold it. Don't leave. We want to take an offering. I got to take an offering. I got to pay for the electric. <laughs> got to pay for the... <laughs> All right, got to pay for the electric. We got to pay for that candy we're giving away. No. <laughs> God bless you. One, one last time. If you, have a, if you have a credit card or a debit card and you say, I'm going to have cash, amen, you can go to the left in the rear of the church and they would accommodate you. Amen. But we pray if everyone can give the best gift you can give for this day if you can give a gift that God will be pleased with in Jesus name God is good I pray I help somebody encourage somebody to get rid of dead something dead just want to keep it real keep it real